In this video, we're gonna be creating a cross-platform Mojo app. We're gonna be building this with Conda so that we can distribute it to other OSs like Mac OS and Linux. And I'm gonna use PyTorch and Matplotlib as an example to build a GUI. So the first thing I'm gonna do is import Python. Then I'm gonna create a main function that raises. So if anything goes wrong, it'll just print the error and exit the program. I'm gonna import PyTorch and create a linear space. So there's gonna be 100 values on the x-axis between zero and 10. Then on the y-axis, we'll get the sign of the x-axis and we'll create this plot function. So it's going to be a def so that we don't have to handle all the Python objects that get returned. And then we'll import matplotlib, the pyplot function, and we'll plot the PyTorch tensors. First, we have to convert them to numpy and d arrays so that matplotlib can use them. And then we'll just do the styling for the plot and show it. And finally, we'll call it from the main function. So now that we have this main.mojo file, I'm going to try and run it. And when I do, you can see we get back this error saying that Torch isn't installed. So to fix this, we're going to create a readme so that other users can follow along with the guide. I'm going to have a link to this in the video description as well. When you open it up, it brings up these three different options for your operating systems. So because I have Mac OS, I'm just going to copy this into my terminal and run it. Now Conda is going to install. You can see it's installing to my home directory here, so they don't need to use sudo to run any commands. And then one very important thing you have to remember after it's finished is just to init it. So I usually put the dash dash all on the end so that it goes to every one of my shells. So you can see all my shells like bash and zsh have been updated. So now when I restart the terminal, you can see that the base environment's activated. And then I can echo conda prefix and it will show you uh, which environment's running from conda. So now that we've installed conda, we can create an environment and install the dependencies. So I'm going to call this Mojo Plotter, pin Python to 3.11. So this will give us access to a new Python binary and a lib Python to link to from Mojo. And then we'll install PyTorch and matplotlib as well. Now you'll see that this will install all the dependencies for us, including the system libraries. So we don't have to install those with our system package manager and also the Python libraries too. So you can see PyTorch 2.0.1 is going to get installed. So we'll run that. And now we can activate the environment and then run the program. And you'll see this window will pop up. So this works cross-platform. It'll work on Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. And you have all these tools that you can use so you can move around, zoom in, and save the file to disk. So it's a really nice way to be able to share a cross-platform application. But to be able to share it, there's one more thing we need to do. So we'll go conda env export. And then this from history exports just the stuff that we've installed explicitly. So now we can bring that up, environment.yaml, and you can see the three dependencies that we installed are there, including the pin Python. Uh, this prefix, you can get rid of this so that other people can install it. Now that we have this environment.yaml file, I'm gonna show you how to install it. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this prefix back in to show you that if someone forgets to take this out, that you can still install it to a different location. So you can go conda env create, and then from file, and then put in the environment.yaml, and you can change the name. So if I put in name mojo test, then it's not going to use this name up here and it's not going to use this prefix. It will do that. And then we can activate it. So we go conda activate mojo test. And then just to confirm that we're using the correct dependencies, you can go conda env export from history. And you can see that we're using the same thing as what we installed here. But we have a different prefix and a different name. So now that you understand how this works, we can add it into the readme, showing users how to quickly set up the environment. And then the other cool thing that we can do is whenever we activate the Conda environment, we can make it so that Mojo links to the correct library. So I've added this into this command here, which will work on Mac OS and Linux. And then if we open it up and have a look, you can see all it's doing is whenever the environment gets activated, it'll just set this environment variable. And then likewise, whenever the environment gets deactivated, you can make it so that it runs this. So it'll unset Mojo Python library. So now if we have a look, I'll go conda deactivate, and then you can have a look at Mojo Python library. See there's nothing in there. And then when I activate the environment, so Mojo plotter, and then echo it again, you'll see that it's linking to the correct library now. So linking to this means that we now have access to everything in this isolated conda environment from Mojo. So the last thing we'll do is we'll just add that to the readme, showing how to activate the environment and then run the program. 
Something else I want to show you is that if you go to PyTorch.org, you can get the latest version of PyTorch for whatever operating system you're on and take advantage of the hardware as well. So if you're on Linux and you had an NVIDIA GPU, you could select this CUDA 12.1 and then use this command to install all the libraries that you need. But because we're on Mac, I'm going to select Mac and default and then just copy this command here. Now back in my terminal, I'm going to create a new environment and install Python 3.11 into it. It's going to be called Mojo Plotter Mac. So now I'm going to activate the environment and then paste that command in that we got earlier. So you can see it's using the Conda channel PyTorch now to get the latest version. And you can see that here in PyTorch, we got PyTorch 2.1. We'll install that. And because we're building this specifically for Mac, now we can export the entire environment. So we'll call this environment macosarm.yaml. And if we bring this up, in our editor, you can see that we have the PyTorch channel here and all the dependencies, and they're specific for our platform. And we just want to remove this prefix at the end here. So now that we've done this, you can add it to the readme file, showing them how to install the macOS ARM64 optimized version. And then you can imagine if you're doing this on an NVIDIA GPU, you could also run the same steps, go into the PyTorch website, copy the command, create the environment, and then create the environment.yaml file and show them how to activate it. Thanks for watching, and if you want to see more of this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you.